Yeah, I'm turning it off. Check, check. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. You know what my phone does? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm on the phone. It automatically starts me off on. It mutes you. So I have to press the button every time to unmute it for some reason. It starts no. off on muted. I think I think that's just to make sure you don't say anything or get the other person to say anything you don't want them to say. So I think it's more of you, maybe the phone making sure that this is exactly what you want to do and not you just clicking buttons, maybe. Maybe right, that's what you yeah. Oh. All right, so let's get this. Wait a second. Hold on, let me let me pull up a couple of things. I might pull up a couple of things. Nah, my phone's still. I can hear every click I make. I can see what my phone makes it. <laughs> so I'm trying to reduce the number of clicks. Well, I'm ready when you are. All right, I'm ready. Let me just, uh, I mean, it's recording. I wonder if they hear any background noise from this fan right here. No, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. The only thing I hear is, uh, I hear myself when I click, but I don't hear any background noise, anything else. My ears are pretty secure as far as uh, the noise that you're wanting for me to hear. All right. <clears throat> you ready? Yep. All right. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Just In Time Grilling, and once again, we are at the cookout where we can talk about anything, anything goes, just gonna let the conversation flow. As always, I'm here with Drake Elliott. Drake Elliott, here I am, in the flesh. <laughs> the for another good one. <laughs> the hesitation is normal. I don't. I don't give. I don't pause. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we're still working through this. All right, so let's jump right into it. Before we even started recording, we got on the topic about sports, and of course, last night the the basketball game. And by the time I posted this, Fred probably be way weeks later, but the books. And the Hawks are playing for the last spot in the NBA Finals, and who's going to win the Conference Finals? And uh, I'm excited. I, I am not watching the games, but I'm watching the highlights. I'm watching the commentary. And Drake, you automatically jump to tennis. You just ignore my basketball commentary and jump to tennis. Right. Why? Yep. Because I'm very, I'm very much not interested in basketball right now, guys. Um, it, it, you know. The last teams that I wanted to uh, be in the finals, or I, at least I wanted to see, have been eliminated. So the Brooklyn has been eliminated, and um, uh, the Clippers have been eliminated. You know, that's who I want to see other than, you know, people that have been that, that got eliminated, like the Lakers and Brooklyn and whatever else. But anyways, that's all water under the bridge now. And if I was going to watch a game, it would be Phoenix. I'd like to see Chris Paul get a ring, but I also like Devin Booker. You know, Devin Booker reminds me of not a young Kobe, like people have been saying, but a young Clay Thompson. So, okay. Yeah. You know. So, so, okay. So, at the end of the day, you just don't watch basketball just for the sake of watching basketball. No, I don't do that. No. I, that's why I went towards tennis. Yeah. You're right. I'm I am a huge NBA fan. So if I had the opportunity to watch an NBA game, I'm going to watch it. Same as 
um, NFL. Now, I got to admit, if I had the choice of watching the Lakers play, I would probably watch. I would watch the Lakers play over any other team. If I had the choice to watch the Dallas Cowboys play in American football, then I would watch the Dallas Cowboys. But because I'm in Germany, if they do show a game, I really don't have a choice. So I'm just to the point now where I'm just happy to watch because I'm not watch, paying for. Right. I'm not, yeah, I'm not paying for one of these paid subscriptions where I could have a choice, um, not yet at least. So I just enjoy. I just enjoy football now. I just enjoy basketball now. Right. You, and people, you talked about uh, when he says football, people. He's talking about soccer. He's talking about. You're not talking about NFL, are you, Justin? Yeah. So I'm. I'm used to the saying uh, football. Talking about soccer and the, and saying American football when I'm talking about traditional football. I, right. I guess I would need to make a distinct distinct <laughs> distinction. Yeah. Um, because yeah, they don't call it soccer here. It's, it's football and it's American football. So of course, the people that I'm hoping to listen are probably going to be American. So I should just say soccer. Um, but I, I just enjoy watching somewhat sports. But now I'm also a fan of tennis. So go ahead and give me an update on who's who's still playing. Yeah, tennis. Roger Federer. Yes, he made into the. I think this is the third round now. You know, he's looking good on the grass and everything. And people. Justin, the reason why I say that is because any, for anybody that doesn't watch tennis out there and you don't know about goats of tennis, maybe you know about Michael Jordan, okay? Michael Jordan is still considered the goat of basketball. Would you not? Would you, would you say that, Justin, or at least like the most iconic player? As a, yeah. You know, you got LeBrons and Bills and stuff like that. But Michael yeah, yeah. Jordan, everybody knows Michael Jordan. Okay, so Roger Federer is considered, if not the GOAT, one of the three. Now, compare, comparison-wise, you know, to the other two guys that are the major people, which are Novak Djokovic and Rafa Nadal, Roger Federer is a little bit older, right? He's four yeah. or five years older than the other, his counterparts. So, now going back to the basketball and the tie-in of this. Michael Jordan, imagine Michael Jordan in that 98 or 99 season when he is just about to retire, but he's still got the skills. That's where Roger Federer is, folks. He's he's right there. Will you say that, Justin? He's right there. Uh, I would where, definitely say he has uh he yeah, I would say that. I would say that, yeah. Yeah, he's getting he's out of his he's, he's pretty much out of his prime, but he's still got the skills to win one. And that's yeah. what we want him to do is win one, you know. And uh, he's at Wimbledon right now, Wimbledon Championships. I know anybody's out there that's ever familiar with any kind of sports, uh, surely you've heard of Wimbledon. It's the biggest sporting event <laughs> in tennis and in the tennis uh, world, right? Right. Uh, you know, Wimbledon. you know what I would say. I would say if they haven't heard of it from tennis, then they probably heard of Wimbledon Stadium or uh, in uh, as far as soccer. Um, it's it's a, it's a major stadium. Yeah, it's a major. Right. It's a yeah. major place, yeah. Yep. So it's like it's like Madison Square Garden. You, right. You, you it's just like know Madison the name. Square you Garden. Just know the name. Yep. It's like uh the Masters, um, you know, Augusta National and, and, and golf, if anybody knows about golf, you know. So it's it's just very prestigious. So, anyways, Roger Federer is in that. He's moved down to the third round. He's looking good, y'all. He is looking good. So, so I'm just trying to sports wise watch it. Right now, it's just centered on tennis for me because I'm trying to watch a goat in my eyes and my favorite tennis player that I've watched, you know, succeed. So it, basketball, it, you know. So with that in mind, if, if Roger Federer gets put out, would you continue to watch? I would for some minor storylines. Yes, I would. Yeah. Okay. Coco okay. Ga, a young African-American woman. <laughs> She's, she's pretty young. She's up and coming. I, I'd like to watch her continue in the women's single side. Uh, and I'll still watch Novak Djokovic, you know, but he's not my favorite. Now, I Roger better put out. Uh, how did he do in that, other, that smaller tournament? Because I know he put out the French Open. Yep. How did he do it in that smaller tournament? You said he was he got the... bounced in the first round, I believe. First, it had to be first, second round. Really? In a smaller tournament? At a smaller tournament, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, right. you know, it just all goes 
just for his mindset, man. Like you go to Wimbledon, you come in with a certain mindset, right? Yeah, yeah. That's like he just came back from injury. If I remember what you told me, you, you right? Keep me up to date. Now I'm gonna say Drake. I I know Roger Federer. I know the other two two tennis players' name. I don't know the young lady you named up and coming. Um, two things I want to say about this. I think tennis is the only sport that I probably well no. It, yeah, it's the only sport that I can think of where the men and the women are equally uh, loved and admired. I think every other sport there's a there's a not most not, not most fans recognize stars from both from both things, and I think that's the reason why they get paid relatively the same. Everyone knows Serena right. Williams. Everyone knows Roger Federer. Those two names, whether you are a tennis tennis fan or not, you probably know those two names. <laughs> You're right. Just like yeah. Christian Ronaldo. You've probably never seen them actually yeah. play, but you know who Christian Ronaldo is or, or Lionel Messi. You just right. know these names. They are, if you are any type of sports fan, these names probably have came up some form of fashion. Yep. Um, so I'm, yeah, I think, but tennis is probably the only sport where I probably watch the women is equal. If, I probably watch the women more than I watch the men. Um, and probably the only other sport where that happens is Olympic gymnastics. But that's every four years. I think yeah, tennis true. is the only time I really be like, okay, who's playing? Ah, Serena Williams is playing, or Venus is playing, or Osaka is playing. Uh, then, oh, Federer is playing. I think tennis is the only one. When I do sit down and watch tennis, I, I it doesn't matter which side is playing or which gender, I watch them. Every other sport, I can't say the same. And I don't know if that's on me or what is it about, but... I, can necessarily say the same. I do try to watch uh, basketball, but mm, I don't know. Just the hype behind it, maybe it's different. All right, now Drake. Now you mentioned something uh, before we got on the phone, and then this where I was like, we need to put this. We need to record this. And no, you made no, a, before you say that, Justin, can I say one one thing about the the equal equality with the yeah? Tennis? Go ahead. One go little ahead. thing. Okay. For anybody out there that says, and I've heard this circulate, these are my own brothers that have said this before. Anything, and this makes him sound kind of bad, but anything that, <laughs> that can, it, it can be two genders in, oh, that's not a real sport. Or, you know, like football is generally considered, hey, that's a male sport, right? Oh, that's not a real sport. This whole masculine thing about, oh, well, tennis, well, it's both women and men. Have you ever heard anything like that, Justin? It's not a real sport if if, if 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 a woman can play it or something. That's totally wrong. Totally I, the wrong way of thinking. You know, I I I I I, I haven't heard anything that that come in, but I haven't heard other sexist comments where women on as athletic, women on as this. Um, and you know what? It's it's the it's the it's the it's the it's the opinion of certain people. But you know what? I've also questioned though. And I know we want to blame media, 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 sometimes for women's sports not being publicized. But, you know, I, I've also questioned some women. I'm like, so, because every every time the Olympics come up or the World Cup come up, mainly the World Cup, they always talk about the unequal pay in, uh, in, in women's sports. And normally it's the, it's the commentator, somebody that's a women, America, women's soccer. And the reason why, to me, gains more importance is because at least as far as America, the women team is way more successful than the male team. Way yep. more successful. Even I know that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm not a soccer watcher. Even I know that, yeah. They are, they are, they have been dominant some years, and and uh, they, I mean, there's there's people that probably know the female soccer player name more than they know the guy's name. But I mean, the female team has been very dumb, but it's not like that in every every other uh, country. There's some countries where you know, like Germany. I would say the, the latest team and the male team is very both very good. But yet the male team gets more recognition, more sponsorship. I mean, when the when the men World Cup come around, people literally shut down. As far as uh, I'm not gonna say a city was shut down, but it's quiet. Everybody watching the game. When the women's World Cup is on. Right. Yeah. It's not as it's not as quiet. People still do run their life. It's not as such a big event. And I asked them, I asked a, a group of women, because I know men, there's a lot of sexist men out there. So I oh, yeah. even ask a group of women, do they sit down? Yeah, you want equal pay for women in sports. Uh I think when it comes to sports, it's different from the regular work field. 
I think when it comes to sports, if more people watch it, then the sponsors will come, right? That's how I thought, Justin. You're right about that. And now, so, because that's the business side of it. Yeah, that's the business, the business side. side. So I now mean, I know if, if more networks have put it on there, then more people watch. But I think in general, if more people watched it, the sponsors will be forced to partake. So I asked a lot of women, I'm like, how often do you watch women's soccer? Ah, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. But you will stop and watch the soccer game with the men. So sometimes I can some I'm not saying I, I, I understand men being sexist. I don't, I'm not saying that at all. But I think if women are pushing for equal pay as far as um because they want to be very feminine, you know, uh, not feminine, but you know, they want to they want to push for this, like then you have to support the sport. If you want to support the sport. And I could be completely wrong, but if you want to support the sport, you want these women to get paid more, then you have to champion it by becoming fans, turning it on, watching it. It's like YouTube in a sense yeah. of the, if, if, a, if a video gets a lot of views, eventually they're going to get monetized. That's so right. Yeah. Views. And no so matter just, what you are, who you are. Yeah. Exactly. And so if, if people just start watching this, that men and women, but really, men, if, if all the women just started watching all the women's sports, they will get more television time. And then the men, because they just sometimes love sports, will probably eventually, watch, eventually start watching it. Um, I'm telling you a big name that, they, that helped the WNBA out a little bit. When Kobe Bryant started taking his daughter to the game. So they helped. Right. They helped. Oh, man. You know. It helped a lot. Man, I started, just thinking about what could have, what could have been, man. What could have been with with Yanni? Was that her name? Yeah, Yanni? I think. So. And uh, anyways, where were you getting into after we? I got us back to the tennis a little bit. Yeah, no, no, but just just as far as tennis, man, I enjoy. Uh, yeah, I enjoy watching tennis sports. Uh, and I, <laughs> uh, anyway, so no, we were talking about how you. The comment that you made right before we started recording was about when Arkansas fans, Arkansas Razorback fans, started cheering for an SEC team. SEC team, oh yeah. <laughs> when there's when the Razorbacks get put out every year, you know, you got some people, including my dad, he does this too. It's like uh, root for the uh, well, I'm gonna start rooting for the SEC team, knowing good and well. You don't care about the SEC team because those are the very same teams that beat up on the Razorbacks every year. <laughs> so, you know, and especially it all comes to a head when you want to okay, root for an SEC team, but you know who's gonna be in the in the in the in the in the championship game? If we're talking about football, it's Alabama. Right. You know it's gonna be Bama. So you really gonna run a week <laughs> root for the SEC team? I mean, unless you are an Alabama fan, uh like unless you are a devout Alabama fan, some some people like to root for the underdogs. A lot of people like to root for the underdogs. You know, if you don't know a specific situation or you're not affiliated with a certain team, you want to root for the underdog. Where well, Alabama is never gonna, it's never the underdog. <laughs> so you're right. So so I mean, you're gonna be rooting against Alabama. You know. So I mean, now I'm the opposite about the underdogs. I just like to see the best team win in any aspect. I like to see the best players play and the best teams win. That's just me. You know, I whoever works the hardest, whatever the talent beats out, I just want the best team to win. I can't stand it when big stars get hurt and you don't get, like, the best effort. You know you know what I'm saying, Justin? Yeah. I mean, if you better, you just better, right? That's what a, that's what a championship – that's what that's – what, competition is all about right who's the best it's a certain thing right so yeah but i think uh okay so i'm a little bit different i i've, I've heard the whole i'm both i'm bet for i'm root for other sec teams I, I, let me get my opinion about that real quick all right i guess before college football i have done it before but for every other sport i have never turned to another team from the same division and be like i want this team from the division to win no I, I don't like that team I mean, if I think about the Dallas Cowboys, I don't cheer for the Eagles. I don't cheer for the Washington Red or Washington Gym, whatever they call the Washington, the Washington football yeah. team. I'm not cheering for the Giants. 
I, 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 they beat the Cowboys. Like you said, they beat up on, on my team. I don't. Now, once my team gets put out, if it's American football or if it's basketball, I think I still enjoy, I still continue to watch just because I just enjoy watching the sport. Now, you're right. When the best players are performing, it does make the game more exciting. Oh, but yeah. I, I now, I guess I'm going for the storyline. And I guess they have to do it anyway to keep the thing going. They have to come up with these different storylines. And they want you to, to like a player. And I started liking players, certain players. And then I started cheering for that player, which I guess it makes them kind of cheer for that team. Um, I just, I, and, and now I, I, we've had this conversation. And this could be a whole other topic, but loyalty to a certain team. I think now because I can't regularly watch uh, a certain team, I have just become a almost a casual fan. Now, I, I still root for the Cowboys. I still root for the Lakers. But since I've moved to Germany, I've become more of a casual fan of, of just the sport. So I guess if I had to wear a logo around, I would wear the NFL logo. <laughs> I would wear the NBA logo. I will put that on right. my scalp. Not yeah. necessarily a team count, you know, because I am, no. I just, I'm just generally loving the sport. Uh, and I think that's actually for me more exciting because I can just watch a good game, no matter who's playing. I'm just trying to watch a good game. And not get upset about the outcome. You and not get upset about the outcome, yeah. <laughs> I just want to be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think that's, that's a good place to be in, man. I think that's what what, what was the line in Gladiator? Uh, it was like, aren't you entertained? Yeah, something oh, like yeah, that. I yeah, I love that movie. Are you yeah. not Yeah, I, I love that line. You know, like, yeah, what are, what are you trying to do? <laughs> yeah, and I think yep. that moment, I'm just, I just want to be entertained. Now, <laughs> this would be a whole nother podcast, but I'm going to say this here. I was mostly a fan of the Lakers organization because because of Kobe Bryant, you know, that's yeah. a, I mean, I, I'm not going to hide that, uh, say it's, it's just something else, I like Kobe Bryant, he's my favorite player ever to play the game of basketball, and uh, that was just it, however, I love basketball too in itself, and I did, I did like the Lakers, I like other players to play for the Lakers and stuff like that, but what I'm getting around to is when you say that you like the Lakers, and well, who else, Justin? The Dallas the Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys, that was your favorite team, um, The reason why I fell off on the Lakers is because I felt that the players they were starting to get in, I felt that they tainted the Lakers whole – the Laker – how do I say it? The Laker feeling, the Laker um, – um, I don't know. Okay, okay. I get what you're saying. When LeBron <laughs> entered, I was like, okay, <laughs> now wait a minute. I like a Laker to be a homegrown person, you know, okay. or at least make your superstar in that jersey. When LeBron okay. came about and these other guys came about, you know, when they, they have made names for themselves in other organizations, you know, but that just comes from me being a little bit old school and being like, Kobe, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Kobe fan, so I'm like, he bleeds purple and gold, he said, and, you know, I even know he asked for a trade at one point, but that didn't happen. But it was just all meant to be what he was the 20 year later. You know what I mean? So yeah. even even Shaq, he made a great name for himself in Orlando, but he really, when he won those chips and the Lakers uniform, that really put him up, right, Gus? Yeah. That yeah, really yeah, cemented it. Like yeah. he he's what he's what everybody thought he was gonna be. You know, you know, and then you can go back to just older people like Elgin Baylor and um, you know, Jerry West, just players that are have been in that jersey for a specific amount of years and they, they crept up in that jersey. You know, I don't know. It just hits me a certain way when different people come and come on and put on that, that historic jersey. It's not just we're not talking about a clip. We're not <laughs> we're not talking about uh 76ers or Portland. We're talking about the Lakers. The same way if I was a Celtics fan, I'd probably feel a certain way about these different players getting traded in and out of the Celtics uniform. We're talking about a historic fan base, and it just hits me a certain way when somebody else has been 
been successful, highly successful, other places. And then I just feel like you want the prime years to be with the team that they're they're on. They you want them to kind of stick to the team in a sense. Right, right. I'm guessing that's why you're a huge fan of the uh, Warriors, right? Right. Yeah, homegrown, like drafted, and just you know that's why Steph Curry. I mean, he had ankle problems for years. I remember that's the first thing I heard about Steph. He was talented, but he had ankle problems. You remember that, Justin, when Steph yep. Curry had ankle problems? Yeah. He just worked his way up, played Thompson, Draymond Green. That's the core of the team. And I don't think anybody expected him to be that good at the time. No, they didn't. And they so. just worked. Just put in the work. And just, man, you know, Steph Curry, I don't think he was ever supposed to be really this good. It's just because he was just a, a skinny, lanky. I mean, he's even changed his body. He got some muscle mass now. Have you ever seen, have yeah, you seen his, yeah, yeah. his transformation, you know? I yeah. mean, he's put in the work. He's just put in the work, and he's done it in the same uniform. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying, guys. You know, I don't have – I love that LeBron brought another chip to the, to the Lakers organization, but I just feel a certain way before then when he, um, you know, he's been in – you know, had success in Cleveland, Miami, and now he went to the Lakers. I don't want it to be just like a another hit and run, and he goes somewhere else, you know, like, so you, you okay? I understand what you're saying. You like you like the long longevity, the loyalty to a team, or just the, the yeah. growth within the team. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a totally different conversation because, yeah, man, I, I I we've had this conversation many times. I think one time we recorded about being loyal to a team versus being a bandwagon fan, and and I used to think a bandwagon fan was was a knock. Is that you shouldn't be a bandwagon fan. <laughs> Yeah, um, but but now I guess I, I can share my opinion and tell you that since I'm just becoming a general casual fan, is it's it's really not a bad thing if you, you when you want to watch sports, you just want to relax. You don't want to get too tired. I think there's good sides to both sides. I mean, I think I think for the sport itself, as far as success, you want a lot of casual fans. <laughs> If if everybody yeah. just, if everybody just stuck to their team, when that team got put out, that'd be the end of the season. They're not watching anymore. You you need in order for the sport to be really successful, and especially sports that are growing, you need those casual fans that are just gonna watch just to watch. So, um, that I think from both sides, you gotta you gotta you gotta respect. But anyway, that's a bit totally different story. Yeah. Um, now, what I do want to talk about though is continue the thing about cheering, just cheering for. Um, multiple teams in the same division. Now, I is that is that is that is that a casual fan? Is that a bandwagon fan, or is that you just trying to create your own story to to give you a reason to watch it? I'm not sure. I would I wouldn't say it was a casual fan because casual fans don't necessarily know what the conference is of each team anyway, man. I mean, you know what I mean, so. The Phoenix Suns have won out in the West, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I don't think a purely casual fan. We're talking about somebody that just likes basketball and they tune into a few games. They they don't even really realize the teams that Phoenix had to go through to uh, get to that level. I, maybe they do, but there's different levels to casual fans, and that opens up another box of worms. So we ain't gonna get into that. <laughs> Yeah, what level of casual are you? You know, yeah. <laughs> what level of fan are you? <laughs> oh man, I, I I think once again there's so many angles for that. So let me, let me tell you this much. Let me tell you this much. I, I'm gonna tell you, and 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 this oh man, this opened up a whole can of worms. I'm gonna tell you the reason why I'm kind of cheering for the Hawks right now. I'm gonna tell you the okay. reason. I've always liked Milwaukee. I'm not going to say I always liked them. I always liked the storyline of, of, of the Greek freak. I love his success. I just love people's success, and I want everybody to succeed. Man, if I if I could set it up, <laughs> of course, it would take, what, 30-something years? I would try to get every team to get a championship, but that's unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like I, that too, though. I, I, like, I, I just like people to be, to maximize their potential. Central, yeah. Um, 
Now, of course, like I said, that takes 32 years. So even even if every team won once once a year, a different team won until all well, teams have won, yeah. he, there will still be some great players that would never get a championship because their career is not going to be that long. There's always going to be a good player that never gets a championship. But so I okay. look at I look at it from this way. The reason why I'm sort of cheering for the Hawks right now is because I like the idea of having two black coaches in the finals. I like that idea. I like the idea of, of having uh, some success as far as being a a, a, a black coach so or a coach from a different race. Is it Nate McMillan and Monty? Well, yeah, Nate, you know, it would be okay. Nate McMillan and Monty. Monty or, and, and even if the Clippers would have won, it would have been Ty Lue. Um, and I, I just, because I, I, I think, and I shouldn't think like this, but I think sometimes there's still a stigma against black coaches as far as getting a team to be successful. And this, not necessarily this would be enough to change the whole opinion, but it would be a nice nice thing to celebrate or it'd be a nice thing to be like, huh, well, where's the excuse now? You know, the in, the in the last four teams, three of the coaches were black. And I take away from Milwaukee Bucks coach. I mean, he's a great coach, uh, but I would, I would like to see that because they know just guarantee that one of them will win. Because um, I think all of them are good coaches. They wouldn't have made it this far if they wouldn't have a, a good coach. I mean, you can see how some teams, especially with all these injuries, right? Yeah. To still be able to maintain, because every team, every team that's still left, I think, have had, had to face injuries. Every, all the other teams, even the, the Brooklyn Nets, all of these teams that played, all of them had to play through injuries. So it wasn't like <laughs> it's just the players, the superstar, you the super, put the superstars in the game and let them play. No, they all had to face injuries, which means that you had to see the different coaching styles. And I would say Ty Lue has done a great, great job coaching as far as his team being down two games, they find a way to come back the first two series that worked this last series, it didn't work. Um, but you see the coach from, from Phoenix and the adjustments he's had to make. And you see the Hawks, the Hawks shouldn't even really be in the conference finals and look like they're gonna get put out. But I just, I just, I just wanna celebrate their success and like, so you can be a black coach and be successful. It's the same as being a black quarterback. It, should, it shouldn't still be something you have to think about. It should be, the best player, the, yeah. the best player for this position, but it still comes up in the back of my mind. I guess I'm, I'm still young, but I'm old enough to when people used to have these conversations. I used to hear these conversations. And yeah. so I'm secretly cheering for the Hawks, not because I really care for their team, but just because then it would be kind of cool to have two black coaches in the finals. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother can of worms. So. I think that's part of the reason why I'm still watching. That's my storyline that I'm shooting for now. Yeah, well, that's a good one. I just never thought about the coaching aspect of it, or the coaching side of it. Yeah. No, you know it, it's crazy because I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I think we all find different reasons why we chip with certain teams, and like, like now I'm, I am cheering for. Well, I was cheering for Germany. Uh, when they before they got put out the the European Championship, I was cheering for them because um, that's my that's my adopted team, I guess you can say. Because well, I'm living in Germany, so I feel like I need to support the host team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I live in Germany. My wife is German. My son is half German, so I need to I need to be support them. I I'm not gonna say I'm gonna necessarily carry a flag around with them, but I I I, I, cheer, I can cheer for Germany. I'm going to cheer for America, but when they go against each other, I'm going to cheer for America. But I am, um, I, I guess it's the part of the whole assimilation process. You know, if you live in the city, you probably want to cheer for that team because everybody else is going to cheer for it. <laughs> right. It's kind of like the Arkansas Razorbacks, you know. Arkansas is that professional team pretty much. And I mean, yeah, and I, I, you know, it's crazy. Um, I never wore an Arkansas Razorback shirt or a hat when I, I was noticed. in Arkansas. Yeah, I noticed. But when I left Arkansas, I bought two or three of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I bought two or three of them because I wanted to represent my state. And I want to I want to say, hey, this is where I'm from. This is the team that I cheer for. I never cheer for the Razorbacks, really. 
I, Have you ever been to Arkansas Razorback football game, Justin? Football, no. I've been inside the stadium a few. I've been inside one memorial for high school games. I've been in the been to Fayetteville a couple of times. Why did I go to the you know, to the Fayetteville Stadium? But I don't think it was for a game. Nah, no. Ah, but I have been to the basketball games. I have watched the uh, uh man, I, I, I watched yeah. the basketball games. You know, I'm and, huh? Well, I gotta say something. What? I know everybody out there, whatever state y'all y'all from or anything like that. Man, it's just something about the Arkansas Razorbacks. <laughs> when you get in that stadium. And they and you woo pick suey. And that cannon blow every time you get a touchdown. And it's little things that you don't see, like it's on TV, it's, it's not on TV. And you know, every time the Razorbacks make a first down, it's known that you say uh, the announcer, the commentary is saying that's another Arkansas Razorback. And then everybody's supposed to yell first down. And I'm just telling you, let's call the halls. You can feel it in your belly, Justin. It's just something else, man. People in Arkansas just adore the Razorbacks. When you don't have a sports team, you don't have the the NBA team, you don't have, you know, these other big teams, MLB, it don't matter. When, 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 and specifically football for Arkansas, that's the thing, right, Justin? It's the thing. So, Which so are, you, are, are you trying to convert team. me? Are you trying to convert me to be an Arkansas Razorbacks football uh, fan? What you mean? Are you trying to Are you trying to make me become one? Are you trying to say I need to? I need I'm to, just saying. If I go to the games, that the in, yeah, you would have been more of a fan. I would have been <laughs> saying like, because you, it's something about feeling that being people that I promise y'all, people that you don't think. They would associate with you if you got an Arkansas Razorback shirt on and you going to uh, going up against Mississippi State at War Memorial or even I think it's Reynolds, Don Reynolds at Fayetteville, something like that. I've been there too. But when if you got that Arkansas Razorback shirt on, you can be talking to a different race, different age, and they have talked to you left and right because guess what? We all about the Razorbacks. And it's just a different kind of camaraderie, man. I'm words, telling you. Words do seem to bring people together. <laughs> yep. All right. So I'll, I'll say this. Okay. It's interesting you say that. Now, I'm going to throw a question at you. Throw, throw a question out there to you. Because I, I can say I'm an Arkansas Razorbacks basketball fan. Okay. I can say I'm an Arkansas Razorbacks uh, baseball fan. I, I pick up a guy. I've been following their stuff a little bit because they're, they're very good this year. Or they've been very good for a while, I think. Um, when you say you're an Arkansas Razorbacks fan, does that mean that you like all the sports teams or you just like the football team? Well, it means that I like the sports that I like, which is basketball <laughs> and football. But that don't make me any less of an Arkansas Razorback fan. You know, it's just, I just particularly like those two sports. I don't so, like soccer or MLB. Okay, so, or, so, well, how do you, so. I, I, always, I, always, I always wonder about this. So I, I always wonder because these are high school, I mean, uh, college teams. And it's not like professional. When you like one team by professional team, that's the only one is, that is in a sense. So I always wonder if you say you are a fan of a group, a college team, does that right. mean that you have to be a fan of all the teams? And, I and when I, think and so. Now, you say you're a fan of the sports that you watch. So you watch basketball and you watch football. So right. what about the fans that are like a huge Arkansas Razorback? football fan, but maybe their favorite basketball team is the Duke Blue Devils. Is that well, also, is that okay? That's a, that's a, that's an anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too many, I mean, if you're loyal to, I'll come down to that loyalty podcast I'm, I'm self- Maybe we should hold that one off. <laughs> right. Well, we can talk about we can come we can address that again. But I'm I'm curious because I, I do know a few people that say my favorite football team is this, but my favorite basketball team. And you talk about the same university, I mean different university. We're not talking about like professional where you I might would, just like different places. Because I understand you don't necessarily want to be loyal to a city. You don't yeah. you probably don't want to be loyal to a city. If you live in a city, that's one thing, but if you're outside that city, I guess all bets are off. 
kind of thing. <laughs> well, I would dare ask though, if they didn't live or knew somebody or they they didn't venture frequently to that city or state, I would ask them, I mean, at what point are you a bandwagon fan then? Are you how did you did you start liking them because of their success and not because of the organization? Or is it because you actually live there or know somebody that lives there or you go there frequently? If not, you are a bandwagon fan pretty much. I mean, well, if you just, on their, base, on their success, you know. I'm going to tell you something. Now, and this, I think this is this is where how I became a Lakers fan. This is how I became a uh, Dallas Cowboys fan. But, I mean, versus, like, <laughs> you, you know, if I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, why wouldn't I Dallas Mavericks fan? Or why wouldn't I a New Orleans Saints fan? Or, or why am I not a New York Knicks fan? I'm telling you the simple answer is this. Cowboys. I'm telling you the simple answer is this. Uh, I could have easily been a Chicago Bulls fan. Um, I'm going to tell you the reason why certain people are certain fans and, and it's to a team that's way across another country. Um, sometimes it just comes down to popularity of the sport. It's, I mean, popularity of the team. Uh, and I think that as far as when, okay, the NFL, I know they love to show, they, show, they, show, they have national games every week and they have regional games. And a regional game is either going to be you're going to see the, the Saints play or you're going to see the Cowboys play. Well, when I was younger, I think when I became a Cowboys fan, was the last year that the Cowboys won the championship. Uh, so it was what, 90, I'm mean, just going to show you how great of a fan I am because I can't even remember the year. I'd say 90, 95, I think, 94, something like that. And wow. that's <laughs> huh? when I was born. Yeah. And uh, man, it could have been 92. I don't remember. Anyway, bottom line is, you, if between the New Orleans Saints and the Cowboys, if they had to show one of the two games, they're going to show the Cowboys game because they were the more popular team. So you got a Cowboys game every week, whether it was a national game that they show for everybody or it's just regional. They're going to, they show the Cowboys every week. And you just see like on sports radio shows, like the Skip and Shannon, uh, First Take, they always talk about the Cowboys. And so if you're a casual fan, I just became a Cowboys fan because they were always talking about it. I knew the names of the Cowboys players. Without actually watching the Cowboys play, when like I became a yeah, like the Bulls at the time. When I became a fan, so when I became a fan of the sport in general, the Cowboys were dominant. And if, if let's say now, I think the Saints are well. I, some people argue they're against me, but I think the Saints are more successful than the Cowboys. And I think now, I probably would have been a Saints fan. But it's just the timing of when I became a fan of the sport and which team was dominating. Is the same as basketball. I never really watched. Your mom was a huge Michael Jordan fan. I really never watched basketball when Michael Jordan was playing. I, I remember running into the room, hearing your mom get excited, but I never really watched the game. When I became a fan of the sport of basketball, as far as watching uh, outside of playing, because playing a sport and watching sports are different things. When I became a fan of just the general basketball watching it, is when Shaq the first went to the Lakers and I started following Shaq because I thought he was just a really cool player. He was very dominant and I just, just loved his dumbness. When he joined the Lakers and then I saw Kobe Bryant play, that's when I became a fan of the Lakers. And I just stuck with the Lakers ever since. And so sometimes I think you become a fan of, I mean, Duke, if you watch college basketball, they always talk about Duke. And I think some people probably to become a fan of yeah, it takes their success is probably the reason why you start off being watching them, but you just you just continue to follow them because you always hear about them. So let's say the Arkansas Razorbacks, uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks have had when when uh, I forgot the coach basketball name coach's name, Stan Heath. What? No, before Stan Heath, way before Stan uh, Heath, when Stan Heath was an assistant. Man, he was an assistant. Or you're not talking about uh Nolan Richardson. Nolan Richardson. When no, he... his assistant was uh uh the uh the guy that just left. Uh oh Mike whatever, Anderson. okay. Then that's I got gotta run bottom line. With Nolan Richardson. Mike coach, Anderson. Yeah, Mike Anderson, yeah. And Nolan Richardson was a coach, man. I, I think your mom was following them too. Your dad was following them. You all had your daddy always had Arkansas Razor back cap. I started following them a little bit then. Like, like I said, though, that was pre my basketball love, love for basketball. But I knew who he was. I, I, I knew 
because there was Arkansas, I should cheer for him. And I was from Arkansas, I should cheer for him. But I just, I wasn't into the sport, but I knew who he was. Um, and I think I followed a little bit because I lived in Arkansas. I started following uh, Houston Nuts a little bit. And I wanted them to be successful, but I was never really a fan then. I just I, I just became a fan of the Cowboys. I became a fan of the Lakers. Like I said, now I probably cheer for the, the Razorbacks more just because it's it's my state. And so anyway, I can represent my state, but like, yep, that's Arkansas. That's Arkansas. You know. Yeah. <laughs> the first Arkansas Razorback football player that I started, you know, taking notice to was Matt Jones. He was an athletic quarterback. He came out of Arkansas, and then he actually went on to be a wide receiver thing for the Jaguars. But anyway, yeah, he got mixed up in drugs. But anyway, in the NFL. But uh, you remember that. Matt Jones? Yeah, you know I remember Matt Jones, name? yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, when Houston Nutt, Houston Nutt took a hold of the Razorbacks, uh, he was the head coach. I actually got his autograph on a hat. Uh, that's pretty cool. And um, that was during the Darren McFadden and Felix Jones days. This was a highlight of Razorback career. I mean, <laughs> it was it was a highlight, man. When Darren, man, Darren McFadden was a prolific offensive weapon. I mean, they used to run, run that wildcat formation. Oh, man. He could pass the ball, and he was just a dual threat. Man, you remember any of that, Justin? I remember the wildcat. I remember wanting to cheer for them and, and, and hoping for their success. Yeah, I remember that. That's Arkansas was on point. That's when you did get a lot of extra bandwagon fans, but there was a lot of excitement. There was a lot, yeah, a lot man, of excitement. It was popping in War Memorial back then, man. Marcus Monk. Oh man, he was a great wide receiver. It was, it, it was, that was the times when I was when, when me and my my dad, my brother, his friend Jason, we were we were going to, we were getting uh the tickets and we were going. Uh, to the Razorback game, and it was it was really good. It was really cool being there at that point. Now this is this is a different podcast, Justin, but I will because we got to end this one soon because it's going on pretty long. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. Man, we've been uh, all over the place with this one. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say this to end this out. Uh, we got to talk about this. If we're gonna talk about NCAA. I don't know if you've heard about it, but as of today or yesterday, one of the two days, they have said that the college players will get to benefit from their names and everything else monetary-wise from now on in college, in, co- in their college career. That is huge. What huge. Does that, hold on. What does that mean, though? That means that they... If they jersey get to make sale, money they... off of their name, jerseys, and stuff like that. So we got players like Reggie Bush, who got his Heisman taken away, who's asking now, where is it? Like, uh, okay, I put up these stats. And so what about me now? We got Chris Weber with the Mich- with Michigan talking about where's my banners and stuff like that. And we got all these players, Johnny Manziel, Texas A&M, saying, can I sell – uh?" Number such and such jersey now with whatever his jersey was. I don't know if it was two or whatever else. So we got all these players that are chiming in now, and they're saying everything you've taken away from me, uh, I want it back, or at least I want my banners and my my recognition back. You know, Reggie Bush is a leading push, obviously, and everybody's saying give him his Heisman back because yeah, he needs his Heisman away. back. He needs it, but I think I don't know. Do you do you go back and under this stuff because at certain that was against the law at the time. Or it was against the yeah. rules. Yeah. But I will say at least I, w- I would go on and just give it back to him. I, I mean, you don't have to – if you ain't asking for no money or anything, at least your banner, stuff Man, like that, this, your this, this is going to be a tough thing because what what's the level of that? That just means that they if they – if someone recognizes them and they want to use it, that, that, their name, that means they can get – sort of paid for the likeness, right? Is that, what, right. is that what that means? Yes. So that means if they go into, because I think there was one play that got in trouble. Uh, during, this was actually one of the years the Razorbacks were very good, and I think they were going to Ohio State. Uh, and this is after Houston Nut. And a few of the players got in trouble because they, instead of paying for tattoos, they signed a couple of autographs 
so they can get tattoos. Yeah. Would that be a lie? Right. Or what I we need to, I need I to look this up and see what 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 they levels have to is. Find that. But yeah, or, they have or, to find that. Or but, when uh, someone recruits them to the team, is that allowed? You know? Yeah. Because I think I remember. What are you saying? No, go ahead. I was about to say I even I even remember um, the player I just named, Darren Fadden, got into a little trouble. Uh, they said somebody gave him a car <laughs> before uh, he went to the NFL or whatever. So, I mean, we just yeah. got to learn and find out the, the, the details of this. I'm this gonna is research interesting. My, that's, that's a big myself. conversation. I need to do some research on that because, in a sense, I, I like it because these players, they are I – mean, people making a lot of money off of their backs. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. People Man, making a lot yes. of money off of their backs. And you hear – I mean, this is where it completely feels. You have college coaches that are making millions. Millions. Uh, Nick Saban. Oh Nick Saban God. making millions off of the success of these players. Now, in Nick Saban's defense, it seemed like no matter what team he rolls out there, no matter what players he rolls out there, he always is going to be in, his, in, be in the finals. I mean, he's oh, changing yeah. players out every four years or whatever, and he's still being in the finals. So That's I had true. to say but something about his coaching know, ability. players also know coming out of high school that you're going to join Nick Saban in Alabama and win a chip, or at least have a chance for it if you're good yeah. enough. <laughs> now, right. I guess I, mean, I guess my thing now is what about the smaller universities? Arkansas can't compete with Alabama. Oh no. Um, they try. But, but uh I mean I'm not I'm not I'm just saying as far as we do have some rich people in Arkansas, but I think right now Alabama just has a, more of a lock on people that are probably willing to keep their keep them a big name. Yes. Uh these blue blood colleges that they call them Duke and basketball. I mean I don't know. I guess just be more the same as far as which teams win championships. It's almost like having a salary cap. <laughs> right. It's yeah. almost like having a salary cap, man. It's like um, without a salary cap, you know, if you're going to try to go maximize your books, because there's, I mean, a lot of these players like Johnny Munzel, um, Johnny Munzel, people like him technically should not have anything to worry about. He knew he was going to go to the NFL. Sad that he wasn't successful in the NFL. Right. But there are certain players where it's like, okay, you know you're going to go to the NFL. They, why do they need the money now? But then there's a lot of other yeah. players that they have no shot in the NFL or they might have a short stint in right. the NFL. Their best year might be think, old college year. Yeah, and I just think of like uh, how old I am. I'm 26. And like I said, I was watching Razorback football heavily when I was like, going to the game. When uh, Houston Nutt was the coach, Derrick McFadden beat the show. Uh, had this rule been in place then, Derrick McFadden would never have to worry about money ever because when you when you saw the number five on an Arkansas Razorback jersey, which couldn't have his name on the back of it, if he would have got any kind of money from that, anybody out there, oh my goodness, he would have been a multi-millionaire, multi-millionaire. Yeah, I don't know right. if you've ever seen the number five jersey. No, but yeah, it's crazy because when he was yeah, when he was out there, Ooh. he was definitely dominant. <laughs> yeah. and, and that jersey, you saw that number five jersey. I don't think at that time, I don't think you saw really any other jersey. Right. Maybe a Felix Jones. What was it, number 28 or something? Something yeah. like that. But, yeah. but number five was the thing. Oh, man. That was, I, I got a for for instance, I have a number five jersey right now in the closet. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Yeah, that was that was the that was the jersey now, and and you know now I guess I, my thing now though is, and how far does this go? Because uh, we talked about this before. I think only true fans recognize the importance of the offensive line. Oh yeah, and. Somehow you gotta. I think the what they call the big ugly. Some people call them whatever, but yeah. these running backs and these quarterbacks are only as good as the offensive line allows them to be. How would they be compensated? Because are we just talking about casual fans say, "Hey, I'm giving you money," <laughs> or you so and so? Well, Derek McFadden, we all seen him without the helm. The offensive line, they never get the well, TV time. How does that work? I I need to know the details of this because. That just goes along with the whole situation you're talking about the WNBA. I mean, like, what are you doing that to advertise? Like, it's gonna take more offensive linemen and of the, you know, in the past to push these other ones up, and it, it kind of goes along with that, you know. No, I, no, I don't see. I, I don't. See, I, I see two different things. 
I see it two different things. I, I don't see it that way for the offensive line. I see the offensive line just does their job. And they just, they just, they, it's like putting in the work. Now, this is where it's more of the women who are working at a, at a, at a nine, to, nine to five job. They put in the same amount of work, yet they don't get the same recognition. That's where I compare it more because these women are doing a job. There's no TVs, there's nothing they, they're doing a job. As far oh, okay. as the professional athletes, um, they, if they could get more people to watch their sport, because I know they're champion, the players are champion themselves, but we need to get just more people in general to watch the sport and get more sponsors to participate and get TV time. That's different. Uh, because what more can you expect an uh, offensive player to do to start pushing this guy down and start celebrating? <laughs> what do you expect to do? It's, it's just the, the, peep, the, 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 the camera follows the ball. No matter what sport it is, the camera follows the ball. So once the offensive lineman does his job, the ball is, and the person, the ball is gone in five, 10 yards. He, he, he can't do anything. He, this man is working hard. Though that, that front line is working hard. And it, it's kind of like in some sports where the defensive players don't get as much recognition as the offensive player. You know, if that's your job, then you're doing, if you're doing your job right, you deserve to be compensated. And that's, that's what, you know, Jane, that's what whatever, you're doing your job right, you deserve to be compensated. Uh, so that's to me that's a, that's a different conversation because an offensive line cheering, yeah, okay, offensive lineman players, but who's uh, how do I if I if you're under the helmet, how, I don't I'm gonna be honest with Drake. As big of a fan I am of the Dallas Cowboys, I probably can only tell you two names of the offensive line players, two two of the names. If I want to, I can look them up, but it's literally I can only tell you two names: the uh, the the top the high flyer. NFL players or the top high flyer Dallas Cowboys, I can tell you all their names. I can tell you half of the defensive players' names. But the offensive line, I can tell you only maybe two names. And that's because mm -hmm. they talk about them all the time. And you know why they talk about them? Because they got injured or they failed to meet expectations. That's the only reason oh, why I can tell you about these offensive players, offensive linemen names. So I think there's something different. So how I'm this the thing, how are you gonna compensate them and who's Who's putting the value? Who is deciding the value of the people? That's going to be the other thing. Who's deciding the value? Is it going to be jersey sale? Because I'm pretty sure they, they don't really make offensive linemen jerseys. <laughs> no, they don't. I wouldn't think so. You're going to have a quarterback. See, that's where the players have to be like, which, I mean, that's, once again, you put it on the players. I, I don't see, in, in, I know in the NFL, it's tradition that if a running back has a really good season, they always buy a gift for the offensive line. You have heard. I didn't know that. You have heard of some people. I think one one person bought all of the offensive line Rolexes, or he bought them all jet skis. I think there's one of the NFL players all them bought them like a car or something. Not a, maybe not a car, but a smaller car. Or you take them out to dinner. It's tradition, and maybe quarterbacks do it too. But it's tradition for a running back when they have a very successful year. Yeah. They always buy their offensive line and gifts. It's, it's like yeah. it's a thank you. Quarterbacks, it's, it's, the quarterbacks are about the offensive line and the wide receiver gifts. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't, if the offensive line don't block for them, and if the wide receivers don't catch the balls, the quarterback is nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so you're talking about. I mean, you, you think about, uh, man, this a uh, running back. Like, uh, oh man, this is, uh, um, my name is going to just go off right now. <laughs> but the running back for the, for the Dallas Cowboys, man, I forgot it. Oh, let me look his name up. Don't ask uh, me. <laughs> uh, he just got a, he, a couple of years ago, he signed a huge deal. Highest paid running back. I'm telling you the reason why I'm getting his name because the last couple of years he has failed to live up to that contract he got. Oh, wow. I was happy though when Felix Jones was uh, a Dallas Cowboy. Darren McFay was a Cowboy at one time too, at the end Who? of his career. Darren McFay. Oh yeah. And uh, the cool thing about Felix Jones was he was a Dallas Cowboy. He was this uh, kid in my class in the twelfth grade who got into a wreck, and everybody around the school had uh, reached out for Felix Jones. And told him he got into a wreck, but uh, it was Austin Walmax, uh 
you know, uh, that was his favorite player, Felix Jones. So Felix Jones actually made an Instagram video or some type of video to, to, to Alex. Cool. You know, that's pretty cool. I got two. I mean, that was cool that that happened, but he was a popular kid in school. And I'm just imagining if somebody else would have got in a wreck, what that would have but they would have showed the same level, which is no, yeah. they wouldn't. That's a different story. Uh, Ezekiel yeah. Elliott, that's the running back I'm talking about. He just received a huge contract for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Ezekiel Elliott was a good running back. He's a really good running back. But he would not have been successful. He probably got an extra $20 million, $30 million, thanks to the thanks to the offensive line. If the offensive line wasn't pushing him, giving him all those yards, giving those opportunities, he wouldn't have received such a high contract. <laughs> and so you do have to be sometimes, so you have to be a little bit thankful. You gotta, you gotta show the people that help you make your money. You gotta give them some recognition. And uh, yeah, I don't know. So that, I'm, I'm interested to see how that's gonna work. I'm interested to see, because these smaller universities that, that can't pay their teams, um, how, how is that going to affect the recruitment? Yeah. And, and, and what about the sports that don't generate any money? That's the other thing. There, uh, yeah, the basketball team and the football team generate money. The baseball team generates maybe a little bit. But some of these soccer teams, they don't generate any money. These gymnastic teams, there, there's not really an audience in, as far as on the college level. Uh, right. Yeah. There's not a, as much television time. You know, so how, did, how are they going to be compensated? I'm, I'm curious about that. The swim team, how are they going to be compensated? You know? Well, man, you just know what you're getting into when you get into it. That's just that's that's just part of that for the love of the game. If you got a, a love for swimming, that should be enough, right? <laughs> I mean, you can no flip that back, Drake, you can flip that back to the football players. If you have a love for the sport, you have a love for the sport. See? <laughs> right. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. It goes either way. They can be flipped back to them, man. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, there's um, always made ways to generate money, though. I mean, I think if people if 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 more people recorded themselves, especially people with, with with all this talent and stuff, even if your sport is not recognized, you can be a personality these days. Yeah, and no longer are there you have to go through a a sports radio. We're making a podcast right now that can be broadcast anywhere, basically. Yeah. Right. So. Imagine them being at a certain level right then, right there, telling their story, and you know, and then posting on YouTube their talents and stuff like that. So nowadays, it's kind of more in your hands. I'm not saying that like nationally, you know, you're going to be broadcasted like a football or basketball player, a top premier player like that. But still, if you're an excellent swimmer. I wish I was an excellent black swimmer right now, Justin. Oh man, oh man! Imagine that. I'd make. I'd be the one if I was really good at swimming. You oh could, man, you I, could find a way to dominate the narrative. That's true, and I think I think that's probably the reason why they're changing up. If I, if I I'm I'm kind of curious if you can be paid for your likeness. What about people that else that do have YouTube channels or Instagram that are in college that are athletes? Yeah. I wonder, can they, I wonder, does that mean that they now can be paid? I wonder if they ever be paid. Like, because if you're famous for, if you're famous for being an athlete and you have an Instagram channel, you have a lot of followers, could they receive money? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's the NCAA that woke up a sleeping bear. They have, yeah, man. Like, it's so many ways you can go with this. It's somebody at the top going to say, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. This, no, oh, wait a minute. We got to set some, 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 some uh, <laughs> some concrete stuff to that we, we can't be doing all of this. Uh, I love the way they go with it first, but I was just saying earlier that it has been it's the first step, no matter what else. You know, they're saying that the players now, their likeness, whatever else, they can get benefited from it in some way. I don't know if that's monetary or anything else, but anything is better than what they've been going through. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to see how this goes because yeah, I think man. this is one of the things where uh, if you discuss it, how complicated sometimes things are not as cut and dry. Yeah, let's let's pay the players. Cool. How much? How far does it go? How do we try to keep the balance? 
Yeah. What, what about other athletes? Uh, but like you said, though, I mean, I think we. I think it's for the. I think uh, but I, I think you're right though. Like when we first decide to play with sports, when you first start learning about the NFL players, NBA players, soccer uh, soccer players, they make X amount of dollars in this sport, but you still choose a sport where you just love, you're really good at it, but you kind of choose going in knowing that it's not uh if you if you're going in for the money that it is. That you realize I mean, that there's not going to be a, as lucrative of a, of a career trip right. if you do make it. So I guess you're right. You understood that when you first went in. It, um, and, you know, it's just a big thing with this, man. I mean, what's the difference between that and work study? I mean, they're still students, too. I mean, like, but they have to but get people making money off of them because of their activities. They, they're really good at and talented at. They deserve to get some kind of benefit from it. I mean, you got people that are trying to hurry and get into the league, whether that's NBA or NFL or baseball or, I mean, I mean MLB or anything like that. They're trying to rush to get into the league because they are hurt. We, yeah. got, we got kids that are coming from high school that are hurt, coming yeah. out of the hood and stuff like that. So, of course, I think this can better make – this This is just a better way altogether to make you want to stay in the NCAA. And guess what? The more time you spend in the NCAA, you can get a degree. So that's preparing them just in case they fall out of the NFL, NBA, whatever it is. Yeah, no, no, keep going. I'm, I'm going to say amen. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to benefit everybody because the more time that they can get these top level players to stay in college level, NCAA level, guess what? They've got to stay in school as well. So that means they can get degrees. So that means they can be good members of society or what are they called? Something functioning members of society. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no, you know what? Just I, in case they get bumped out of the NFL, NBA, or whatever else, it benefits everybody. No, you're right you know? about that. If this, if this, you know, because they're there, we've talked, I think we, we've we seen it before where there's a lot of players that think they're so good or good enough that they just want to skip the, skip college and leave college. Skip they college, go to leave. They, yeah, they I got to say. Money. And yeah. also, and also, that's why some, that's why sometimes these people that give them money is so is so exciting to them because they're like, right? You mean yeah. give me fifty thousand? I can get that fifty thousand to my mom. To my yeah. mom, get my mama out of the hood. That's what yeah. a lot of them say. I and gotta, that's why they, they end up taking this money, thinking it's gonna be okay. You know, I'm going to this yeah. little rest. I'm just taking the money that someone's giving me. This is gonna help my family out. And so, if they have a chance to better their family, better their home life, they take it. And so, yeah. and I, I man, I remember there was a guy for the Arkansas Razorbacks, back straight. And this, I, I do follow him. Man, he was he was a decent player. He wasn't a great player, but he tried to get out and 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 he, and he got an agent. Now, once you get an agent, you can't go back to college. He got an agent, and he ended up in a G League or D League, whatever they called it. And then he was gone two years later. He just was not good enough. And right. I think there are a lot of players that, that that are maybe the best in their town, pretty good in college, but maybe just not good enough to be for the pros. This gives mm -hmm. them a chance to maybe get a little bit of money so they can right. send it back home. Yes. Because, yeah, the scholarship is enough to pay for themselves, make sure they don't go hungry. But what about their family? <laughs> right. It's, when, a, like, it's, it's, it's hard to make yourself better or be better, or be more successful when you're in danger mode. When you're in fight or flight mode, like a lot of these kids start coming out of high school and stuff like that, you would do anything, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, give them a little money, let them get stable somewhat, and then let's go with it. I mean... Oh, man, I want to look this up. I think there's something we need to talk about tomorrow or the next time we do a podcast, because I want to, I need to look this up. I want to know how far this goes, and we got to stay developed on this because this is, you know, I actually know a few people that are, that are, that were one percent against players getting paid. Sure, I know a few people me. like that. I was there was they and they, they made some excellent points. They felt like a scholarship, a full ride scholarship, was enough. And I was like, I can't agree with you. I cannot agree. No, with you. if a if a full ride scholarship is enough, at what point? I mean, you got so many coaches that. 
Oh man, that's the dirty I just told you, you the, the university is benefiting. Yeah, you got so many league. universities to get these players in, knowing that they're talented in sports, but knowing that they got 1.0 GPA level. I mean, but but they still try to get them in and, and fit them in some kind of way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, now, you know that they're taking advantage of the player. Like you said, one yeah. point GPA, they shouldn't be in college, and somehow you know they're in college. They shouldn't they, be. They shouldn't yeah. be in college, and now you give them a full ride, and then once you once you use them. But what they then they right. they're out of the university and it's like, well, don't, some, or don't they, let them because yeah, some of those players, don't. I mean, I think I think they tried this a few years ago. I, I remember them talking about this where they kind of deferred a little bit. Like if you if you dare to play football, yeah, you probably your private focus is not going to be on schoolwork. And I think so they had like every year that you played a sport, I think somebody tried to introduce an idea of if I played a sport one year. And I choose not to do do my school work as, or I, maybe I, I I don't work as hard as my school work. You should be given an extra year in university to complete that work. Mm-hmm. I think they were talking about doing it at one point in time because they understood that some people might. I think I'm going to take the as a I'm I'm a top athlete here. I'm not going to take 15, 20 hours. That's too much of a too much of a workload. I'm going to take right. nine hours, whatever the minimum I can take. I'm going to take that. And then mm-hmm. you had some people that did stay there four years, but they didn't have a degree. And so now they, their eligibility is up. And now what, what, what are they going to do? Well, what are they going to do, right? What are they going to do? They can't finish the degree. They, they've used up all their money. So I think at one point in time, they're like, well, if for every year you play for us, you can kind of defer your college years as far as I think somebody introduced that. I don't know if it actually went through, but that makes sense because if you're a top player, you think, well, I'm just going to focus on football. Forget the grades. No. <laughs> The grades should be important. I mean, you basically telling the kids to hold down a full time job and then practice in the study. And even at high school, you practice a lot. You practice a lot to go to every practice, that's go what to the I'm game. Saying. Yeah, that's man. a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> that's a lot work of pressure study, on you. Yeah. And they expect yeah, you to man. they expect you to perform one percent well, and then at the same time, you're expected to keep your grades up. You know, your grades so, up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This big, this new system. If, if you know, if they can make some money, well. You know, being in school, you know, that'll encourage him to try to stay in school longer, man. Yeah. man instead of if that's just a, taking if that's a not... risk. You got so many players that take risks, yeah. you know, going after the first and second year because they don't want to run a risk of being injured and stuff like that or something happening and then jumping into the pro league and then it don't it doesn't pan out to them. And then where, where are they now? They, they end up being the where are they now players, right? No. You know? Man, if this if this leads to more athletes staying in college longer uh, and not trying to go professionally because they have an opportunity to to earn a little bit of money and get to the degree at the same time, I'm all for it. If that's one of the advantages, I'm all for it. Yeah, man. Me too. I'm 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 ready to see how this turns out because once again, though, Alabama can afford it. But can let's say one of my favorite teams, the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. <laughs> UAPB. <laughs> UAPB, the Golden Lamb. What are these yeah. smaller universities gonna do? Right, can they can they afford this? How's it gonna affect their bottom line? Yeah. Is it gonna affect the bottom line? Or is it just going to be the Bellmans? The 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 USC well, the, the, the the Razorbacks. And that way I'd say this. I'd say something is better than nothing. If they can give them something, right? It okay. don't have to be where they make it fifty thousand or something like that. If they can just quit, because you got some people. I learned this from that show Last Chance You, Justin. I've been telling y'all about it. That's a plug, everybody. Okay. If everybody's ever yeah. watched Last Chance You, it's great because you got players that are playing football in college, trying to hold down a part time job at some little restaurant or something, and going to school. That's what they're facing against because they don't have no money from the college. What you're doing is you're eliminating the whole thing. If they can even just make the money that they made part time for McDonald's from their college career playing football, that is a lot of stress off of them. Imagine going to school, you know, trying to keep your grades up, playing college football, trying to make a name for yourself to rise to another level, and then having to go and make a little money from that part time restaurant or a part time place you're trying to make. If you can eliminate one of those things, you're better off, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. 
Oh man, this conversation is going long, going on long enough. <laughs> I think this is a great cutoff point. Uh, this was actually a huge focus. Man. It wasn't even something I even knew about. Um, yeah. Drake, man, it was great talking to you today. Let's, yes, sir. Let's go ahead and end this one. Let's go ahead and have something saved up. Let's, let's talk about this next time. Uh, how this development right. is going to end up. Uh, man, <laughs> <laughs> this is something to talk about. So with that, this is the end of the At The Cookout podcast. Just, yes. in, of just in time, grilling the salad and y'all, Drake, man. Hey, last words? Well, last words. I'll see y'all next time. Look forward to it. We have interesting conversation and let's do it again. All right, then. Yep. So that's it. Peace. Peace.